Hello, everybody. Today we're going to be uh, doing acquisition using Gaimager in Linux. So the Gaimager tool in Linux uh, is free and open source, and it's also very, very fast uh, at uh, doing acquisitions on disks. Um, through our tests, we found out that Gaimager uh, is quicker than most um, most acquisition tools that we tried. Um, sometimes even twice as fast as most acquisition tools we've tried. However, uh, it is a GUI only acquisition tool and you can only use it for, um, for Linux. And, uh, I'm not sure if you can use it for Mac OS X or not. It's been a while since I've, I've used Mac OS X as a, as an acquisition platform, but, uh, you can definitely use it for Linux, um, even on a Linux live CD. Um, and it is extremely, extremely fast. So, in Linux, uh, we have to use Gaimager. I've already installed Gaimager uh, from basically any uh, repository I'm using. In this case, I'm using Ubuntu uh, Linux. And um, for any forensic uh, live CDs, uh, Gaimager is installed by default uh, for basically all of them. Um, yeah, so whenever we run Gaimager, we need to run Gaimager as root. So I'm going to use sudo sudo um, to run the program as root, and it's called G-U-Y-M-A-G-E-R. So sudo gaimager, and then it says, basically scans for uh, all of the disks in the system. And we're using the same disk as uh, on the uh, Windows acquisition video, so if you haven't seen that video, I, I recommend looking at it, because we also go through uh, talking about some of the, the setup of the imaging and acquisition. Uh, in this case, we have the same disk. I have this uh, four gigabyte um, USB disk connected through a uh, Tableau write blocker uh, connected via USB. Um, and here we can see ba basically some information about it. In uh, Linux, uh, well, should I say in Windows, we had the uh, kind of uh, backslash backslash period backslash physical disk one um, for our USB disk that we wanted to acquire. In Linux, uh, the physical disk is usually found under something like dev slash dev slash SDE. So I know uh, this is a physical disk because if it was a partition, if it was a logical disk, then it would have SDE1 or SDE2. Um, and that tells me that this is a uh, in this case, it's a physical disk. So we have these other disks, SDA, uh, B, C, D. These are all physical disks within this computer. And then we have this kind of dev mapper, dev mapper, uh, dev SDA3. So this is actually mapping to a partition and it looks like it's an encrypted partition uh, because it's a mapping service here. So what we're actually interested in here is this four gigabyte disk. This is our suspect disk, suspect disk. Uh, not to be confused with any of the disks in the system. So you should know what hard drives you have installed in your computer. Um, and with Gaimager, basically we, we click on it and it gives us uh, information that it already has about the disk, basically just the size and the sector size. Um, if we scroll over a little bit, uh, again, it doesn't really have any extra information for us, doesn't know if there's hidden areas, things like that. So if we uh, right click uh, first, if you haven't are if you don't already have your um, suspect drive plugged in whenever you start it up, uh, you might need to click the rescan uh, the rescan button to get the new drives to show up. Uh, so we right click on the disk that we want to image and we click on acquire image. Okay, now we have a lot of the same options as we had with FTK Imager and Windows. Um, I am again going to choose Linux DD raw image and this uh, tool only supports basically the expert witness format, which is the E01 or uh, Linux DD raw image, which is the um, like we created before 001 or .dd. Uh, it also supports splitting the image files like we talked about before. Um, the split size by default is uh, 2047 megabytes. Remember before uh, we split it up, I think the default in FTK was I think 1500 megabytes. So I'll just keep it at that just uh, for, I guess, fun. Um, the image directory, like before, where do we actually want to save our image to? We do not want to write back any data to our suspect disk. 
Um, so I normally, again, like I said, have a special area for uh, this case or a special hard drive uh, for this case. Um, so in this case, I have, um, I'm just going to save it on the desktop for now, but this is not good practice. Make sure you have a separate hard drive for your cases. And then we have this cases folder and our case is, our case number is 001. And I have this images folder and our, uh, disc is the first, uh, first drive or first device, um, in our case. So I just named it 001. Okay. So now I choose the directory, okay, and that says the directory, the full path to the directory that I want it to be saved in, and then I give it the image name, and I'm just going to call it 001. Um, I would give it, for example, a serial number if I knew the serial number of the disk. Um, I should give it some sort of special identifier, but because of my uh, file system structure here, I will I will know um, what this uh, is related to, basically. Uh, now we go down to ca hash uh, calculation and verification. So we calculate MD5. We want that. We had that last time. We also want to calculate SHA-1 uh, just to make sure that we verify it the same way that we did with FTK Imager. And in this, in this case, we can also calculate the SHA-256, which is required for some countries. Um, reread source after acquisition for verification. This adds an extra step of verification. And I normally do this whenever we're working, whenever we're working with real suspect data. Uh, I won't do it now to save a little bit of time, but I will verify the image after acquisition. Um, okay. So I'm going to go ahead and start. And now, um, the image file that it's saving to the current speed is, uh, about 23 meg a second, and that will probably go down because this is USB 2.0. So it was, tw what, we got up to 30, now it's about 26. Um, I'm sure this will go down shortly. Um, right, so hash calculation, MD5 and SHA-1, source verification off, image verification on, okay? Uh, this is the disk, this is the model, uh, it's currently running, and progress is about 11%. Average speed 26 uh, meg per second, and time remaining about four minutes. Now, before uh, with FTK Imager in Windows, of course it was a virtual machine. Um, we it took about 10 minutes for our whole um, acquisition. This I expect to take about mm, around around five to six minutes. So I will let that run, and then we will come back uh, whenever it's done. Okay, so now that we've finished, uh, I'm going to, well, it finished, it verified an okay, okay. Um, so now I'm going to open up the, uh, the folder. We have the cases folder, we have images uh, 001. And then I have, uh, let's see, I have basically the different parts of the image and I have this uh, 001.info. So these are the different parts. Instead of having 001, uh, as the extension, it started at 000 uh, to 001. If I double click on zero, uh, actually if I uh, open up a text editor and look at the info, this is basically just a text file. So if we change that dot info to dot txt, uh, we could just double click on it, but I just uh, saved it or opened it up here. Um, so let me shrink this down a bit. So this is all the information that we get from uh, Gaimager, and it gives the version number. Again, the version number is very important if we want to actually um, test or uh, reconstruct what we've done. Uh, compilation timestamp, um, when the, when Gaimager was actually compiled, compiled with GCC, uh, libewf version, so basically all of the software information so we can uh, reconstruct what's been done. Uh, device information. So a little bit more information about the, um, the actual device. No kernel HPA messages. Okay. So some parameters from the hard drive itself. Okay. So we were looking at dev STE and this is some information about, 
uh, DevSDE, the serial number is not showing up properly, which means it's probably not a standard uh, configuration. Um, transfer information, device size calculated. Uh, okay, now we get down to the acquisition information. So the device that we acquired, the size of the disk, uh, the format we wanted, a split raw image, uh, where we saved all the information to, what kind of hashes we collected, and then what we were really interested in are the MD5 hash. Uh, so in this case, we got MD5 hash of uh, F7A79, uh, F7A79, and then uh, MD5 hash verified image, so F seven a seven nine now i'm i'm just doing these last few numbers as a comparison but you really should compare and make sure the entire number matches in this case it matched uh, the program matched it automatically and the sha hash as well uh, matched in the original creation as well as the verification afterwards so that means that we c basically c collect correctly copied uh, correctly copied the data uh, it tells us whenever the acquisition started, whenever it ended, and the acquisition speed uh, overall, and then the verification speed. And the verification speed is uh, so fast, probably, because um, caching is actually turned on. So whenever we read uh, the disk, the data for the disk, the suspect disk, it's cached in memory. And then whenever it uh, tries to verify, it just verifies that uh, that cache instead of reading it from the disk again. Okay, so this is the information about the um, the drive, and what I'm going to do now is um, I want to re-verify uh, this disk image. So now that I have the MD5 hash, right? So F7A79. Okay, I'm going to open up a terminal. And most versions of uh, Linux uh, have, uh, well, they all have a, they should have a terminal of some type, and they mostly all have a program installed called md5sum. Okay, if I type md5sum in h, then uh, dash dash help, sorry, help, and this tells me all the different ways that I can use md5sum. But basically, we just give md5sum a um, we give md5 some a file and it will calculate the hash of that file. So for example, if I give it um, md5 sum 001.info, which isn't very useful, I guess, then it calculates the md5 sum of uh, the info file and gives me the name of the file as well. So now uh, I can use that hash again for verifying that, that the info file didn't change. Okay. So if I want to calculate the hash of this original image, if I just do md5 sum 001.000, this is the first part of my disk image, right? So let's go back and our hash value for the overall image was F7A79, F7A79, right? F7A79, sorry, F7A79. And I calculated the hash for the first value, and it wasn't F7A79, right? Of course, it's not going to be because I'm not looking at the entire disk image. I'm not calculating the hash value for the entire disk image. I'm only calculating it for that part, okay? So we can do ls-lha, and we see that uh, this is split up into basically 1.5 gig parts remembered. So just like we, we did with uh, FTK Imager in Windows, we have these 1.5 gig parts, but we need to combine all of these parts uh, before uh, we can get all of the data basically. So one way we can do that is by using cat, which stands for concatenate. And if I do 001.0 uh, star, 001.0 star, that will basically read uh, this file, and then this file, and then this file in binary format, and then I want to send that data to md5sum. Okay, so now it's reading all three of those files concatenated, and it is calculating the md5sum, and let's go back, our file, our hash value was f7a79, F7A79, uh, 
And then here I calculated F7A79. So this is a very quick way to verify your data. Now remember, we always want to work with copies of the original. So uh, since I've just created this disk image, now I would make an exact copy of it, verify that the hash is the same, and then I would only work with the copy. I would archive this image off somewhere else, and I would keep a copy of the image to work with. So this is uh, how to acquire um, disk images with Geimager in Linux if you want to use a, uh, user, a GUI user interface. And also how to verify data, especially multi-part data, uh, using MD5SUM and CAT. So that's it for today. Thank you very much.